Now that you have a little bit of practice with inverses and some of the processes involved in them, we're going to apply something and discover something really neat about inverses. And the big idea is that, you've heard this, inverses are going to undo what's been done. So if I add five, I should subtract five, right? So let's do that and let's do it in blue. Okay, so they gave us f of x equals x plus five. Take your input, add five. But then they say, now find the inverse. Okay, well, again, it's going to undo it. So what's the opposite of adding five? Well, subtracting five. So let's go through the actual process. If I wanted to, let's get that out of the way. If I wanted to write this as an inverse, should be written in process. Let's do that. And then we'll switch x and y. And then we'll solve it for y. So we're going to solve for y. And be like, oh, how do I undo this plus five? Well, I will subtract five. So there we go. So final answer, I'm going to bring it over here. I know that f inverse is x minus 5, which I could have done that from the very beginning. But again, here's your process. And that process involves switching x and y, solving for y. There we go. Done. So now they're asking me a series of questions that's going to lead us to an understanding of something. And again, inverses undo what's been done. And we're going to apply what we learned with the composition of functions, a function inside another function, and figure some things out. So let's switch to green. Yeah, green. That'll work. And we're going to evaluate f of f inverse of 12. And so in a previous lesson, we had dealt with composition of functions, and we would have like f of g of 12. And we'd plug the 12 into the g function. We're not going to deal with g. We're dealing with f inverse. So here goes. f of. OK. And this is the way it was taught in the video on compositions of functions. Let's find out what that is first. The very first thing I'm going to do is work my way from the inside out. What about this F? It stays. It waits. It just, it just waits its turn. Bless his heart. That's what you do. So F inverse of 12. I'm going to plug 12 into not the F function, but the inverse function. Don't let this little exponent of negative 1 make you feel like you have to do something mathematical. Like, I've got to raise it to the negative 1. No, 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 no. I mean, and exponents of negative 1s do fantastic things. But that's not what it means in this notation. What it means is, oh, I'm dealing with that function. OK, so f inverse, that, that's it right there. So I need 12 minus 5. OK, I have 12 minus 5. Well, nobody is surprised that that is 7. OK, here's what just happened, though. We evaluated this to be 7, but we have not yet plugged that 7 in to the outer function of our composition. So all this that's highlighted, you don't have to highlight it, but all this that's highlighted is the same. F inverse of 12 is 12 minus 5, which is 7. But we now have to take that 7 and plug it into the original F function that they gave us from the very beginning. So we're going to switch back to the pen. It's green. And we're going to go 7 plus 5. And we're going to get 12, and then we stand off to the side and scratch our heads and say, 12, that looks familiar. And then we move on to the next problem that will be written in purple. No reason. OK, f inverse of f of negative 2. So what we're going to do is take a negative 2. We're going to plug it into the f function. So f inverse, why would you write that, Mr. Reader? Glad you asked. Because we haven't dealt with it yet. It's on the outside. This is your car. You're not there yet. You're inside the building. Let's deal with being inside the building first. Negative 2 is going to go into the f function, so we're going to have negative 2 plus 5. And then we'll evaluate that. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. Yay, we're done. No, we're not. Well, you're not done. You have never plugged this 3 into this inverse f function. We just plugged in a negative 2 over here, but now we've got to take that output, which was 3, I'd love to highlight here, but I've been doing enough of that. We're going to take that 3. We're going to plug it in right there. So we're going to have 3 minus 5. And that is negative 2. Well, that looks familiar, doesn't it? Let's set this pin down, see what we can do about this. OK, here's the deal. Inverses undo what's been done. If I was adding 5, then I subtract 5. So when I compose, this is going to be wordy, but when I compose a function of its inverse, or compose an inverse of its function, depending on the order, f of f inverse or f inverse of f, of whatever I plugged in, I did something to it, and then I undo it, so I get what I had to start with. Okay, so you took your 12 and you subtracted 5, but then you added 5 and you're back at 12, right? 
You took your negative 2 and you added 5, but then you subtracted 5 and you're back at negative 2. So I could give you a three-headed giraffe right here, and in the end you'd have a three-headed giraffe. It'd be really awkward and they would probably fight each other's heads for food, even though they're the same giraffe. Okay, switch colors one more time. What color do you want? Uh, I've used blue, I've used green, I've used purple. Let's use red and make it stand out. could use white and you wouldn't even see it. Okay, let's simplify f of f inverse of x. First of all, notice that these two said evaluate, meaning we're going to get a number. This says simplify, meaning simplify. Like, there's probably not too much more you can do with it than just be like, I'm done. I've done as much as I can. I don't have a number as an answer. Maybe I do, but all right, let's go. All right, in this one, I'm probably going to get, well, I hate to tell you what the answer is, but, but I do want you to notice a pattern. Notice I plugged in a 12, and I ended up with a 12. Plugged in a negative 2, and I ended up with a negative 2. I'm going to start with an x. I'm going to end with, uh, yeah, uh -huh, yeah, that's what's about to happen. Okay, let's do it. And I do feel the need to highlight on this one. So here's our highlighting. This is asking us to plug an x into the inverse function. Well, that really doesn't mean anything other than use the inverse function. So we're going to have f, just, just waiting, just waiting his turn, just waiting. And in the place of f inverse of x, well, f inverse of x is x minus 5. OK, great, fantastic. So now that is equal to that. Well, I knew that f inverse of x was x minus 5 because it says so right here, OK? Now here's what's about to happen. We're going to take this input, x minus 5. Don't, don't panic that this input is a binomial. It has two terms. But we're going to take that binomial and we're going to plug it in as the input right here, OK? So my input is x minus 5. So everywhere I see a place for an input, I'm going to put x minus 5, OK? That's a place for an input right there. In the place of x, I'm going to now put x minus 5. x minus 5 is my input plus 5. And the beautiful thing that happens here that I think you already notice is that negative 5 plus 5 cancel out, and I'm left with x because inverses undo what's already been done.